Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Nick of Nick Studios and let's get right into it. Okay, so today we are going to once again be deep diving into card classes. Specifically, we're going to look at the resource class. As a quick reminder, there are four main classes of cards in Doorkeeper. Territory, Unique, Unit, and today's topic, Resource. Now with resources, there are four main types and even some subtypes. So please, as always, stay with me to the end because I promise it's not as complicated as it may seem at first. However, before we get into that, I'd like to show you guys the new field layout that I've been working on. These are currently drafts, so if you don't like them, don't be scared. I would love for your feedback down below in the comments, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on that today. So with your resource cards, there are a few different places of which you are going to be playing them. Of course, as always, you're going to draw your resources from your resource deck. And the first place that a resource can be played is in the siege weapon slot in your legion. And of course, we're going to be going into what a siege weapon is um, in a moment here. So after siege weapon, we have your constructs and your constructs are played on your field on the left there. And a construct is played more specifically right on top of a territory card. And lastly, we have the six resource zones. These are going to be for cards like artifacts and events. So now that we've reviewed where you are going to be playing your resources, let's get into the actual details and mechanics of the cards themselves. Okay, so the first card that we're going to be going over is an artifact. And artifacts are broken down into two subtypes, um, enchantments and traps. However, since artifacts, for the most part, operate quite similarly between enchantments and traps, we're not going to be going into the nitty gritty d uh, differences between the two. The main difference is that enchantments are played during your turn and traps are played during your opponent's turn. Or more specifically, they are going to be set during your turn, but they are going to be activated during your opponent's turn. Okay, so starting from the top, on the upper left hand corner, we see the duration icon, and we're going to be getting into that in just a moment. But before we do, um, as always, next to it, we see the cost of the card. In this case, with the Shaman Staff, it costs two Umbral and one of any power token. In the middle there, we see the class breakdown bar. As you can see, it's a resource with the type artifact and subtype enchantment. And then, as with every other card in Doorkeeper, these artifacts have effects, or at least in this case, an effect. Okay, so as you can see, there are currently, at the time of this recording, four different types of durations, each of which are color-coordinated based off of the types of effects that they are most commonly associated with. So with the first type of duration, we see uh, instant. It's that blue lightning bolt. Since it's blue, you can associate that with the enter card effect type. Instant duration artifacts or any other resource with that duration. Instant duration cards are cards which you, you know, primarily play, resolve the effects, and then destroy the card. Response duration cards are quite similar in that regard. However, while instants are played during your turn, response duration cards are played during your opponent's turn. As the name would suggest, response duration cards respond to something that is going on, usually on the field, and they are orange to indicate or rather correlate them with the uh, conditional card effect type. Next, we have the equip duration type. Equip cards, as the name suggests, are equipped to a specific card and are usually equipped via a pay effect which requires you to pay a certain amount of tokens to in order to equip it to a card. Once that equipped card is destroyed or leaves the field for any reason, you may then return the equipped card back to a resource zone. If there are no available resource zones, you must then discard the card. And lastly, we have the constant duration type. Constant duration types usually come in one of two flavors. Uh, the first one is going to be using auto effects, 
and the second is going to have once per turn effects. Okay, so the next type of resource that we're going to go over is the construct. And with constructs, we see a similar setup to the other types of cards in Doorkeeper. However, in the upper left-hand corner, we do not see a duration icon, we instead see this shield. And this shield represents uh, durability. Durability represents how much damage the card can take before it is destroyed. Now with constructs, when a construct is destroyed, it is not sent to the void, it is instead buried. And when it's buried, what that means is that you place it underneath the territory. And when an opponent, or any player for that matter, comes by and claims that territory, they may spend the appropriate resources in order to essentially kind of resummon that card under their control. Also with constructs, since they are placed on the field, and that is of course where your legions are, you may have a legion on top of a construct card. However, keep in mind that during your upkeep step, you are going to have to pay a power token for each one of those units. And if you can't pay that upkeep cost, then you're going to have to destroy those units. And the value in placing your legion on top of a construct is that it's going to allow you to basically um, have another target of which your opponent is going to have to attack. So you can choose between having your construct destroyed or, or having your legion attacked. Constructs have several different subtypes. However, since none of these different subtypes have any important uh, rule distinctions, I'm just going to list them and then move on. So as you can see with this gold mine, it is the production subtype. However, there are also landform constructs as well as fortification constructs. Next, we have siege weapons. As with other resources, in the upper left-hand corner, we are once again introduced to a new symbol. This uh, gear symbol represents the operation requirement for this card. So with siege weapons, they list a specified number of units required to operate uh, these cards. Now in the upper left-hand corner, the operate value that's indicated there uh, shows how many units are required in the legion that the siege weapon is equipped to in order to uh, play the card. And if at any time the operation cost is not met, then you must discard this siege weapon. With that in mind, there are also operate traits, which are effects that require a specified number of units to be exhausted in order to use the effect. So let's take a look at the first operate effect on this cannon card. We see that it says operate one, burn target unit for two damage. And with this operate one, that means that you have to exhaust one of the units in the legion that this card is equipped to. And by doing that, you may then burn target unit for two damage. As with constructs, the siege weapon type is broken down into several different subtypes, but once again, they do not have distinct rule differences, so I will just list them. As you can see with this cannon, it is of the artillery subtype. However, there are also support and transport subtypes in the siege weapon type. Lastly, we have events. In the upper left-hand corner, we once again see that familiar duration icon, specifically the instant duration. Of course, with events, there are several different types of duration, as with artifacts. And once again, we see the cost bar at the top and the class breakdown bar in the center there. There are several different subtypes with, within the event type, which are crisis, legislation, and edicts. With that being said, events are fairly similar to artifacts in terms of how they are played. You just pay the cost and adhere to the rules of the card's duration. Okay, so I know that was a lot to go through today. Um, if you got confused or a little bit tripped up, 
um, please just rewatch the video. Or if there's something that was not quite covered during the video, please comment below and I will be happy to look over any of your questions and answer as many as I can. As always, thanks for watching and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you too can enter the door to adventure.